the Red Sox and the Twins prepare to go to it in this very big ball game. Zoilo Versailles will lead off playing short for the Twins. Cesar Tovar will be at third base batting second. Harmon Killebrew will be at first. Tony Oliva in right. Bob Allison in left field. And the Red Sox take the field with the roar of this great crowd. Rod Carew will be at second base for Minnesota. Ulander will be in center. Zimmerman the catcher. And caught on the mound as Jose Santiago goes out to the mound to get ready to talked with Jose before the ball game today he said that he slept well last night he feels good he's rested he pitched a pressure ball game against Baltimore last week to keep the Red Sox chances alive and he's ready to pitch in this big game today the Red Sox batting order will be Andrews Adair Yastrzemski Harrelson Scott Petroselli Smith Gibson Santiago Zoido Versailles is batting 201 six homers 50 runs batted in Sias, 26 years old. And here's the first pitch. Strike one. One ball, one strike. On deck, Cesar Tovar. Base hit to left. Yastrzemski juggles the ball. Versailles holds it first after taking a wide turn. Zoilo Versailles gets a leadoff single for Minnesota and brings to the plate Cesar Tovar, who has had uh, quite a year with the ball club, batting 268. Six homers, 47 runs batted in. He is playing in his 163rd game of the year today, tying the American League record for most games played in a season. Strike one. Tobar has been one of the top hitters for the Twins against Boston pitching this year. He's 17 for 51 at 333 with a double, triple, and six RBIs. Fouls it back out of play. Strike two. We have here today some 125 newspaper men from all over the country. In addition to the regular facilities, as you see Killebrew on deck, they are using the auxiliary football press box out in right field. All kinds of Western Union machines and telephones have been set up in the press room up and back on the roof. One and two to Tovar. Russ Gibson apparently did not spot that ball immediately or if he did he thought it was out of play Scott made a long run down for it but Gibson who is excellent on uh, catching foul pops must have somehow lost it well, Ken, at one time the ball was out of play but the winds blowing straight out to center field and the wind pushed that ball back into playable territory Russ Gibson was completely fooled by it. And I think that after first looking up at the ball, he took his eye off it and then completely lost it. 
The count is one and two. Two and two on Tobar. Coaching at third base, fiery Billy Martin of the Twins. And at first is Big Jim Lemon. Versailles can run. Reggie Smith is there. One out. Tobar flies to Smith. One out and one aboard. And now we begin to watch part of what will be a great personal duel this weekend, although knowing both men, it will not matter a great deal to either one. Harmon Killebrew of the Twins. And Carl Yastrzemski of the Red Sox each have 43 home runs. Yastrzemski has 115 runs batted in. Killebrew has 111. Four back of him. Over the last eight years, this fellow has averaged just over 40 home runs a season. You can see Jose Santiago motioning to his outfield. He's trying to get him to play straight away for Harmon Killebrew. Ball one. On deck now, Tony Oliva. Ball two. Killebrew is the first man since Babe Ruth to lead the league three consecutive times in home runs. Three balls, no strikes. Ball four, Killebrew gets a walk. Versailles will move over to second. So with runners at first and second and one down, here is the man coming to the plate now who is feared most with all due respect to all the other performers on this club. When this man is hitting, he is a great, great hitter. Tony Oliva is batting 288 at the moment with 17 homers and 82 runs batted in after a very slow start this year in which he had several injuries of various types. Against Boston, he's 17 for 43 at 395. There's a base hit. Versailles will score on this one. And it is 1 0 Minnesota. Oliva banging a single to center field to score Versailles. Killebrew to second base. And the Twins jump into an early lead. Runners at first and second and one out. And right away, we're getting some stirring out of the Boston bullpen. Gary Bell has gone to work. Bob Allison is batting 257, 24 homers and 75 runs batted in. Base hit to left. Killebrew holding at third as Yastrzemski throws it into the plate. Bob Allison with a clean single into left field loads up the bases with one out here in the first and the twins ahead one to nothing and right here Dick Williams is coming out Versailles led off with a single to left Tobar hit a high fly ball to Smith in center Killebrew walked Oliva hit the first pitch into center to score Versailles Allison has singled and the bases are full and of course this is the point of no return for Boston. If they do not win today there's no tomorrow. 
as far as their pennant aspirations are concerned. So it's going to be a day when Dick Williams will not take much time in making decisions regarding pitching. Well, Ken, no doubt Jose Santiago is a little on the nervous side, and I'm sure that all other ball players out on the ball field are. Dick Williams, realizing this, wants to try and calm his pitcher down a little bit. Jose has been high with his pitches, and that certainly isn't the place that he wants to throw. He wants to get the ball down the lower part of the strike zone, but so far has been unable to do it. The pitch that Allison just hit was the hanging curveball. Oliva hit a high fastball, so now... Uh, Dick Williams naturally wants to talk to his pitcher to get him to try and concentrate on the lower part of that strike zone where he can have better success. Rod Carew is batting 296. Lines it to Adair. No chance at second because the ball was hit so quickly that Andrews was not able to get over to second base for the possibility of the double play on Oliva. So Carew is out on a line drive to third baseman Jerry Adair, and it brings to the plate the center fielder Ted Ulander, who is batting 256. He has six home runs, 49 runs batted in. Two out and three on. Strike one. Jerry Zimmerman is on deck. One ball, one strike. Two and one. Three and one. The Red Sox dug out. Pitching coach Sal Magley there in the foreground. Three and one to you, Lander. Andrews to Scott. The Twins in the first inning get a run on three base hits and leave three on. At third is Tobar. The left fielder is Bob Allison. Ted Ulander in center. Tony Oliva in right. Zimmerman is the catcher, and leading off is Mike Andrews. Jim Cott shooting for a possibly unprecedented eighth victory in the month of September, all of them consecutive, which would tie Cott with Camilo Pasqual and Dave Boswell for the most consecutive wins by a twin starting pitcher. Andrews is batting 262. Ball one. Mike has eight home runs, 40 runs batted in. On deck, Adair. Foul back. One ball and one strike. <laughs> well, Mel Parnell's been knocked out of the box before, but... Uh, <laughs> Almost out of the again. Chair then. <laughs> Todd is making his fourth start against Boston this year. Base hit. 
Ulander with the ball. Andrews lining a single into left field to lead off for Boston. Caught is 1 0 against the Red Sox. He beat Jim Lonborg 2 to 1 on the 26th of June with Al Worthington getting a save. The batter, Jerry Adair, is at 264 on the year. Three homers, 36 runs batted in. Twins lead 1 0. This is the last of the first. Ball one. There was considerable kidding in both dugouts before the game, which is always a sign of tension. Here's one of the fellows who was kidding some, Carl Yastrzemski. Foul is out of play, and it's one and one on Adair. Another foul pack. And it's one and two now on Jerry. Coaching at third base is Eddie Popowski. And at first is Bobby Doerr. Peru. Tags Andrews and then throws to first for the double play. Adair into a double play. And there are two men out in the last of the first. The Twins lead 1 0. And Carl Yastrzemski is up. 43 homers to tie Killebrew for the lead in that department. 115 runs batted in to lead the league there. And an average of 319 to lead the league there. Strike one. Line drive, base hit into the corner. Yes, takes the turn and holds at first base. Yastrzemski with a sharp single into right field, fielded by Oliva. With the heavy rain that we had in Boston last night, there is a little bit of a problem as far as uh, the outfield is concerned. It is soggy in spots. Ken Harrelson is batting 260. He has 12 homers. Has driven in 52 runs. Two out. Yastrzemski on first. One nothing twins. Strike one. George Scott is on deck. Ball one and one. Caught is six four, two hundred and twenty five. Pitched 305 innings last year to lead the American League. One and two to Harrelson. Foul back.
Still another. One and two the count. Got him with a curveball. Caught, strikes out Harrelson, and that is it in the first inning for the Red Sox. This is Jose Santiago. Zimmerman at 170 with one homer and 12 runs batted in. Strike one. On deck is Jim Cott. One and one. George Scott takes it. One out in the second. Jim Codd is a good hitter. His average this year is 173, and he has one home run and four runs batted in. But other pitchers know that he's liable to beat you at the plate anytime. He's had at least one home run every year except one while he's been with the Twins. Last year he had two homers and 13 runs batted in. Andrews gets an easy hop and gets him. Two out in the second. There's one thing about today if Santiago and Cut both work all the way. We're going to know reasonably soon because both of them are fast workers. Although Cut was working just a little bit slower than usual, as was Santiago in the first inning because both of them had early trouble. Versailles had a single to left field his first time. His average at 202. Ball one. Now the California Detroit game, where it's been raining all day, is underway. The first game of a doubleheader, and at the end of one, the Tigers lead two to nothing. One and one. Detroit, two. California, nothing after one. Two and one. Ball is out of play. Two and two on Versailles. Twins they had one to nothing in the second with two out and nobody on. Petroselli to Scott. The Twins go in order in the second. No runs, no hits, and nobody left. After one and a half, Minnesota won. In that California and Detroit game, it is Lolich against Brunette, and the Tiger lead in the first inning came on a Willie Horton two run homer. Two nothing Tigers after one. Scott is batting 300. Facing left hander Jim Cott. Strike one. George against the Twins this year is batting 270 with 10 hits and 37 at bats. <laughs> Scott. 
Scott rips a single into center. Runner at first, nobody out, second inning. The batter is Rico Petroselli. Yesterday, Rico was awarded the underrated player award by the Bosox Club here in Boston. His average at 260, 17 homers, 65 runs batted in. 222 against the Twins. Strike one. Reggie Smith is on deck. High pop fly ball. Oliva is coming in. And he makes the catch. Petroselli flies to Oliva. One out and one on. Well, Kenny, that fly ball gave everybody a few anxious moments. It appeared as though Tony Oliva would lose the fly of the ball. He slipped as he started the break. This outfield is very slick. There's a lot of water standing in it. You will see the ball going into the outfield die quickly on the ground as the water will slow it down. And outfielders, I'm sure, will have a lot of trouble trying to maintain a proper footing at all times. Reggie Smith is batting 251, 15 homers, 61 runs batted in. Foul ball. Todd has been leading off a lot of the right hand batters with curveballs, and Reggie just ripped that one past Tovar. One strike. Foul back. Two strikes, the count on Smith. One and two. Smith was once the property of the Minnesota Twins. Foul tipped into the mid of Zimmerman and Smith is out. The second strikeout for Cott. Two men out. His control is always good. He walked only 56 men all last year, which is a ratio of one in every five and two thirds innings. Russ Gibson at the plate is batting 207. He has one home run, 14 runs batted in. Ball one. Jose Santiago on deck. Ball two. Gibson looking down to third base coach Eddie Popowski. Strike call two and one. It is now Tigers two, California nothing at the end of two in the first game of their big doubleheader today. Two and two to Gibson. Well, that fastball was a little high to Russ Gibson, but Russ had one thing in mind. If he could have been able to get the good part of the bat to it and get it up in the air, the wind could do the rest for him and get it out of the ballpark and put the Red Sox ahead. You'll see many batters go for the pitch up around the shoulders. Strike three called as he hit the outside corner of the plate, and the Red Sox are down in the second. No run.
but Carew lined the third and Ulander grounded the second. Now we go to the third. Tovar takes a call strike. Tovar batting 268. Strike two. Foul ball out of play. Word from Detroit now is that Eddie Matthews has driven in a run. The Tigers are leading three to nothing in the last half of the third. Kenny, this fellow at the plate has a chance to break an American League record tomorrow if he plays in tomorrow's game. One and two. He will have played in 164 games in this 1967 season, although the schedule runs 162 games. The Twins have had two ties, and the games have had to be replayed. Tovar has played in all of them, so he will set a new record by just getting in tomorrow's game, whether it's as a batter, pinch runner, or any type. So this fellow has one big thing looking forward to him tomorrow to get his name in the book. Well, he's a great little ball player, Mel. He certainly has helped this club in a lot of ways, in a lot of positions. George Scott has it. One out in the third as Tobar pops up to the first baseman Scott. The Twins lead one to nothing. The batter is Killebrew. Harmon had a walk in the first inning. Well, after all that rain yesterday and last night, we thought we'd get more today, and it's just turned out to be beautiful. Ball one. Stremsky back against the wall. It's off the wall and into second base goes Killebrew. We had to wait on that one and Carl did too because Harmon hit it way up in the air and he winds up at second with a double with one out in the third. Oliva the last time jumped on the first pitch and lined the single into center field to drive home the only run of this game. Now with one out in the third inning he has Killebrew on second. His average at 289. Gary Bell has started to warm up again in the bullpen. He was up in the first inning. Ball one. Oliva is a very difficult man to defense because he hits the ball to all fields with authority. Foul tipped to the mid of Gibson, one and one. Oliva earlier this month set a club record by getting nine hits in a row three hits shy of the major league record for consecutive hits and uh, Bill Dillman of Baltimore stopped him finally in a series in which he collected a fantastic total. I forget the exact amount but he got something like 15 out of 17 all told. Two and one. Well, when Tony first came into the major leagues, the pitchers tried to work him outside with real hard stuff, and the defense swung him toward left field, making him hit that way. But after all the pitchers started pitching in that manner, this fellow developed into a good outside hitter. And now they're pitching him inside and moving around on him, and now he's a good hitter to off field. So he's one of the best in the game and handles the bat very well, Ken. A very hard fellow to pitch to and the defense. Good sharp breaking stuff down two and two. Detroit is now leading California four to nothing and they're still up in the third. There is Cal Ermer the manager of the Minnesota Twins. 
Right alongside him uh, in the first row of boxes is Calvin Griffith, the president of the Minnesota club. Two and two. Foul ball out of play. Count still two balls, two strikes. There is one out in the third inning. Harmon Killebrew is the runner you see on second. The Twins have a one to nothing lead. It is now Detroit. Four California nothing at the end of three. The Tigers have been retired in the third. Foul ball. Armin Killebrew going back over to second base. Oliva is only 25 years old. He's won two batting championships in a row in 1964 and 65. <laughs> Big strikeout. The first one for Santiago. There are two men out. That's the 60th time this year that Oliva has K'd. And the batter is Allison. Bob had a single to left field in the first inning. His average, 259. Foul back upstairs. Last year, Allison batted 220, so he's come along strong, picking up almost 40 points this year. He has, of course, played more this year, too. Two strikes. Twins have a one to nothing lead. Two out, a runner on second. We're in the third. Check swing, foul ball. Jim Lonborg was the man who fielded that one. He's charting the game down there on the far end of the Red Sox dugout. One and two. Pitch. Had him fooled, but was a little bit uh, too close to him. Well, it was a good choice of pitch for Jose Santiago to use to Allison. He, his second pitch to Allison was the same pitch off the side, but the breaking ball. So this time he went with a fastball, moving it in on Bob Allison, and that had him fooled. The only thing was off the plate. He's out with a runner at second and one out in the third. Jose Santiago strikes out Oliva and Allison. Mel had seen him in the minor leagues and had uh, said 
go after that first pitch at first fastball and Jose did and it paid off for him. Ball one. Jim caught pitching. One ball one strike. You know the do it yourself hobby can be a lot of fun but not when it comes to cleaning your own windshield. And that's why Atlantic Red Ball dealers always clean the windshield without being asked and they do it for every customer every time. One and two. Caught this year has come on strong over the second half. At one point his record was two and nine. Two balls, two strikes. He was raised in Roxbury, and he graduated from Hank High, but he went to street. Three and two. The two twin pitchers scheduled in this series, Cott and Chance, have a few things in common. They both won 20 or more in a single season and have both earned title pitcher of the year in the American League. So has Jim Grant of their staff. Still three and two on Jose. Santiago battling cut. Strike three. That is the fourth strikeout for Jim Cott in this ball game. With one out in the third and nobody on, and the Twins ahead one to nothing, the batter is Mike Andrews. Mike had a single to left field in the first inning. The catcher, Jerry Zimmerman, has a conference at the mound with Jim Cott. Andrews batting 263. Plate umpire Jim Honacek is out to the mound. And uh, Cott is going to take a couple of warm up throws, which would indicate that maybe uh, something's bothering Jim. You know? Yes, it appears that something has gone wrong. He may have hurt himself on one of his pitches, and as he's taking these two warm up throws, Seems to be gritting his teeth, uh, and that certainly isn't uh, a good indication from the twin standpoint. He's a fierce competitor, Ken. This fellow is one of the real battlers on the mound, and the ball players in the American League will tell you that Jim Cott doesn't beat himself. You have to go out and beat this fellow. Well, he was hit by a ball, Mel, in his last start in one of the games that was carried here on radio. And this looks more like it might be up. He got hit on the hand, as I remember, and this looks more like it might be elbow trouble just from the way he's throwing. Well, I noticed a little funny reaction by Jim Cott on the 2-2 pitch to Jose Santiago, Ken, and it's quite possible that something could have happened on that pitch. He uh, made some uh, funny movements after turning the ball loose as though something was bothering him, something hurt him. He could have pulled his arm. You notice just then 
he uh, kind of tilted that left shoulder, and he's trying to loosen his arm some. So he must be bothered by something. Well, you could see him grit his teeth right after that one. Ball one. Ball two. And now Cal Irmer's coming out. In this particular situation, because the first time he came out, Jim Honacek uh, more or less brought him out, I don't think it's automatic that the pitcher would have to come out. In any case, Jim Perry has started to warm up in the bullpen, and the trainer, George Lentz, is out there along with Cal Irmer. And there is Perry warming up. You know if a manager of course goes to the mound twice in an inning. The pitcher automatically comes out and they're going to make the change in this case. As obviously something has. Come up to bother Jim caught and it looks like it's his elbow. So he leaves after going two and one third innings. He has allowed. Three hits. And no runs. He cannot be the pitcher of record in this ball game because he did not go five innings. So the Twins' left-hander is leaving. And coming on now to pitch is Jim Perry. Well, Jim Perry is a tall right-hander. Ball four. That walk is charged to Jim Cott as the count was two and oh when Perry came on. And that would be the only walk charged to Cott. So with one out and one on now in the third and the Sox down one nothing. The batter is Adair who grounded into a double play in the first inning. Adding two sixty three. Foul ball back out of play. And we're getting the action once more in the Minnesota bullpen now. Right hander Ron Klein is loosening up. Adair taking a good look at ball one. One and one. Foul ball out of play. Jespremski watching intently from the on deck circle. Two and two. First base, good grab by Killebrew. Adair is out, but Andrews, who is off for the pitch, goes to second. 
So with two men out and a runner at second, Carl Yastrzemski comes up against Pot. In the first inning, he lined a savage single into right. His average is 320. Wow, two and one. Call was looking for the long one there. He swung a little too hard at that one, and in, in doing so, he jerked his head and it took his eye off the ball. That pitch probably looked real big to him, Ken. It was right through the middle of the plate, and realizing that that wind's blowing out, he was going for the long one. Foul ball is out of play. The county is Tremsky is two balls and two strikes. Two out. Mike Andrews is the runner at second. The Twins have a one to nothing lead and we're in the last half of inning three. Three and two. Strike three. Jim Perry gets him. And the Red Sox are out in the third inning. No runs. Twins ahead. One nothing. Only have one more hit than the Red Sox. Carew lined out to Adair in the first inning. That's to Scott. They just get him. Boy, that wasn't long before uh, Carew, who was really pedaling down that line, almost beat that throw. I don't believe Santiago realized he was that close. Here's Ken uh, Ted Ulander, the center fielder, who grounded out his first time, hitting 255. That's out of play. While it's out of play, why don't you light up a White Owl, bringing you baseball here. White Owl Cigars, your host.
One out, one strike. Well hit toward right center, but room for Harrelson. And he boots it and gets by him, chased down there by Smith. And in the third base goes Ulander, streaking in. And we'll wait to see the scoring on that. It appeared that Harrelson had it. He crisscrossed with Smith, who may have been shaken up a little on that play. Smith, uh, slow to get back to his position. It goes as a triple. Harrelson was right there, and all of a sudden, the ball went by him. As Smith came on, it might have been, Mel, that uh, Harrelson heard Smith coming and uh, shied away at the last moment. Yes, it seems as though he did shy away a little bit, uh, Ned, and the ball hit Reggie up somewhere around the, the throat, or either on the face or just below the, the neck a little bit. And, uh, he shook it off, and he's back out in center field. The twin bullpen jumped up quickly to see how badly he was hurt. But uh, Reggie wants to play. He's battling it all away. He stays right in there. Count ball one to Zimmerman. Jerry Zimmerman up. Now the Red Sox have the infield in, as you see. One out and a runner at third. And this is the man that Santiago wants to strike out or have keep the ball in the infield. Ball two. Zimmerman popped to first base in the second inning. One nothing Minnesota. They're threatening for another one. Ball three. Three and nothing to Zimmerman. And the pitcher up next. Santiago has fanned a couple. He struck out two in the third inning. Now he's in trouble. Gets his strike right in there. Three and one. Trouble not entirely of his own making. There was a fly ball that was playable. But apparently got into the sun. Got past Harrelson's glove and uh, hit Reggie Smith. Strike two. Comes right back in there. And now it's a full count. Minnesota leading one nothing. Fourth inning. The game. Fly to center. Reggie back. That's it. Not too far from the center field fence. So 
here we're ready to start the bottom of the fourth inning, and Kenny Harrelson's at the plate. Ned Martin comes back to tell you about it. All right, thanks, Mel. Harrelson called out on strikes his first time up. Strike one from Jim Perry. Kenny is hitting 259 at this point. He'll be followed by George Scott and Rico Petroselli. Minnesota has a one to nothing lead. They got it in the first inning. Bye, everybody. One ball, one strike. Twins got uh, three hits in that first inning, a single, then an out, then a walk, and a single loop by Tony Oliva. Oliva's single drove in the run. Ball two. Perry on in relief of starter Jim Cott, who was forced to leave, and something popped in his elbow as he pitched to Santiago in the third inning. Out of play. Two and two. To right field, it is curving and it is foul. Toward the pole, but deep into the crowd there, and the count is two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Here it comes. Thanks a lot. <laughs> well, that almost wiped out the whole crew right there. <laughs> I thought that was one I was going to swallow. <laughs> Had to get away from that one. <laughs> what are you grabbing me for, though? <laughs> Just trying to make room. <laughs> well, we almost had it, boy. That would have made history. Ken would have had to do a simulcast after that one. There is strike three to Harrelson, and Jim Perry picks up his second strikeout. The Red Sox batters have fanned six times so far. Cott got four of them. George Scott up. George grounded a single to center field in the second inning, and he's batting 3-0-1. Halftime score in college football. Southern Cal 14, Michigan State 17 at the half. Fastball that time. <laughs> One and nothing. Well, that ball really did come up here. Yes, we're working from a new position here in the TV booth, and uh, Ned, I think I prefer the other. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> this is Line Drive Alley right here. <laughs> All right. Scott taking a strike. One ball, one strike. Minnesota has one run, five hits. The Red Sox, no runs, three hits. There is Carew playing just right for Scott that time. Back on the grass and behind second base. They're playing Scott more up the middle these days. And that takes care of George for the second out. Two away. Petroselli up. Rico flied to right in the second. He's two for eight against Perry this year. Overall, he's hitting 260 on the season at this point.
Here it comes again. <laughs> that took care of our floor man. That's... I don't know. These fellows, we've been with them all year. We traveled with them and uh, broadcast their games, and they zero us in at the last minute. Boy, that was it close. Count it one strike on Petroselli. Just missing outside. One ball, one strike. That's a foul ball. Tovar playing it anyway, just in case. Rico will come back, and the count will be one ball, two strikes. Well, tomorrow's starters have been named. Jim Lonborg for the Red Sox. Dean Chance for the Twins. One and two. We're told the Tigers have added another run against California, leading 5 nothing. Fourth inning, I, I imagine. Foul ball, playable, Killebrew after it. That's all, and Jim Perry has retired five batters in a row since coming in. And grounded out. He has scored the only run of the game. Right now hitting at 202. Strike. One and one. And the count is two balls, one strike now to Versailles. Most valuable player in the American League in 65. He hit 249 last year, so he has dropped nearly 50 points in his average this season. Two and two. Got him. Foul tip held by Gibson. And Santiago picks up a strikeout, his fourth. One away in the fifth. Tovar up. He is fly to center and popped to first. Tovar batting 267 and a strong 267. Eight air. To Scott, two away. Funny little hop that uh, Jerry took on that grounder. Thought it was going to hop higher, I believe. It came right to him. Well, here's the brew again. Harmon Killebrew has walked and hit a high double off the wall. It was a fly ball that uh, just went over Yastrzemski's head. Harmon is hitting 266. Ball one. Curves him outside. Ball two. Two and nothing. Oliva's on deck. Minnesota one. Boston nothing. Top of the fifth. Over but high, ball three. So now he's behind to Killebrew, three and nothing.
Right. Curved him three and nothing. Yes, they did, and it's a good thing he did, Ned, because Harmon Killebrew had the hit sign. He was going for it if he would have gotten a fastball, but getting the curveball, he had to take the pitch. Has a good rip, and it's now three and two. Santiago has been effective this afternoon with that sidearm pitch. Either the curve breaking away or a sidearm fastball that would tail in. Count is three and two to Killebrew with two out. Got him. Hey, look at Killebrew beeping. He hardly ever talks to an umpire, but he is really mad about that one. He is out of there, and Santiago has a strong one, two, three inning. Struck out batting right handed against Cott. Now he's left handed against Perry. Out of play, strike one. Smith right now is hitting 250 on the season. Reggie playing against a team that, that, that he originally signed with, the Twins organization. One ball, one strike. Perry has had a fine lifetime mark against Boston teams. 21 wins, 9 losses against the Red Sox over his career. Count is one ball, two strikes. He's beaten them once this year, lost to them twice. But uh, generally has been very effective against Boston. Smith is one for eight against him this season. Well hit to left center. That's going to be in there. Extra bases picked up by Ulander. Double for Reggie. So for the first time really in this ball game this big crowd has come alive. They've been waiting to explode all afternoon. And now the Red Sox have a runner at second with nobody out and Russ Gibson up. Gibson going back toward the dugout. And Dalton Jones is going to bat for him. Here he comes. Kid from the Bayou country who's been the best pinch hitter on this ball club for two or three years. As Dick Williams knowing this is the game. Realizing you got to win it. Is not going to stay too long with too many people. Jones coming up right now. Well there's a good percentage move going with the left hand batter at this time because manager Dick Williams wants Dalton Jones to pull the ball toward right field. In the event he should hit a ground ball to the right side, Reggie Smith could then move over to third base and would be in position to score on a fly ball. Dalton Jones on the year, hitting 279. Three home runs, 25 runs batted in. And against Perry, Jones is one for two this season. That'll get the runner over, and it's a bad hop. Safe. It goes as a base hit for Jones. A bad hopper to Carew, as you saw. And Jones, running hard down the line, beats it out for a hit. 
sending the runner to third and Cal Irmer coming out from the dugout. Here is Irmer coming out to talk to Perry. They've got double barreled action in the Twins bullpen. Well, Ned, on that play, the cat like actions of Rod Carew certainly saved a run there because that ball came up high over his right shoulder and quickly he got his bare hand up to stop the ball. If the ball continues on over his shoulder and goes into short center field, Reggie Smith would have been able to score easily. Well, he got it in a hurry and he almost got his man at first, but Jones kept hustling down the line and beat it out. So now runners are at first and third, nobody out, and Santiago at the plate. And now let's see what kind of play they put on. Well, Jim, I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see a sacrifice here trying to get that runner in from third base and trying to move the runner at first base up in the scoring position at second. If Santiago could push one to the good side of the field, which uh, in this case would be toward first base, it could be a very big play. Ball one. He was not squaring the bunt that time. He had the take on. There, the left-hander is Jim Merritt to his left, and the right-hander is Ron Klein, working for Minnesota. Bullpen activity as the Red Sox have their first real threat of the afternoon. They trail one to nothing. Fifth inning. Ball two. So now the count is 2 and 0 oh to Santiago. Smith is at third and Jones at first. Strike one. Boy, he had the big rip that time and uh, he was going for the base hit. The Twins infield playing at double play depth. They're not looking for the bunt so much. They have uh, Tovar ready at third, but he's not charging. They're hoping for a ground ball that would give them a double play. They'd concede the run. Unless the ball was hit sharply to third. Strike two. Two and two. Minnesota leading one to nothing. Perry trying to pitch his way out of a jam in the fifth. Mike Andrews is on deck. Strike three. He's out of there. Big strikeout for Perry. That's his third. And now it's Mike Andrews who has singled the left center and walked. That was against Cott. They walked. He was 2 and 0 oh when uh, Cott left with a bad arm, and uh, Perry came in through ball three and ball four. The walk charged to Cott. Mike is hitting 263, going one for one today. And he has a shot to tie up this ball game or send the Red Sox ahead. One away. Runners at first and third. Oh, close. Strike. One ball, one strike. Boy, this has been a tingler. One to nothing, Minnesota. How many moves in this game? How many pitches? How many balls and strikes and hits will be rehashed time and time again this winter? In at least two cities. Out of play. And now it is one ball, two strikes. Each team has five hits in the game. The Twins have one run. It's the kind of game you want it to be down on a do or die basis. It's the kind of 
game that you'd like to see in the playoff or in a World Series. Close. Tough. Strike three call and again Perry threads the needle on that outside corner and for the second time gets a Red Sox batter with a bat on his shoulder. Two down now and it's up to Adair. Jerry twice is grounded into the in, into the infield once into a double play. Well, here's been uh, Mr. Clutch for quite a few times this year. This is the fifth inning, but the Red Sox have their biggest chance. Runners at first and third. Adair hitting 262. That's going to be looping out there in there for a base hit. Ties up the ball game. One to one. And the big A has done it again. A little handle hit into shallow center to drive in the tying run with two out in the fifth inning. Tovar or Carew rather started for that and he fell. I don't know if you caught it but he fell trying to get back to it. He was going to try to overrun it. He was kicking the dirt just now out there as if he thought he might have had that if he had not slipped on the skin part of the infield. But it goes as a base hit on RBI, and here's Yastrzemski. Hitting 319, he's one for two today. Score tied, 1-1, one, one, runners at first and third. That's Jones down there at third. Foul, strike one. Well, that toehead from Oklahoma figures in another score for the Red Sox. Adair at first. Jones got over to third, running with two out. And it is one ball, one strike to Yastrzemski. Perry pitching to Yaz. Ball two. Two and one. Well, a game that a lot of the writers play every once in a while. Who would you rather be? <laughs> Jim Perry or Carl Yastrzemski right now? <laughs> well, they both have their hands full at the moment. Big cut. The count is two and two to Carl. As he has said in the past, the last couple of weeks, every time he's gone up, he's gone for the big one, the home run. Well, Jim Perry has gotten away with the high pitch to Carl so far. However, if Carl catches hold of one, he'll never get it back. That's the one Carl likes, and that's the one he gets his long ball on. And he can easily hit it into the center field seats if he gets hold of one of those high pitches. He's had two home runs against Perry this year. Time call. And out at first base, there's Bobby Doerr talking to the base runner Adair. Now, at the pitcher's mound, Jerry Zimmerman wants a word with Perry. Kind of concerned now. Yes, I think he suspects something here as Jerry Adair walked over to talk to Bobby Doerr. He's Zimmerman may be looking for the double steal now, and he just wants to check with his pitcher and remind him that he will probably throw back to the pitcher if the runner should break. And, of course, it could be a decoy by Doerr faking the call on a double steal to shake him up a little bit. We'll see. Ball three. Three and two. Very difficult to just to reason why you'd want a double steal though with Yastrzemski up. <laughs> At third base is Dalton Jones. 
And at first base, Jerry Adair, held by Killebrew. It's full now to number eight. Three and two to Yastrzemski. That's nice stop by Carew. No play. A run scores. It's 2-1. An infield hit for Carl Yastrzemski and a run batted in his 116th. And there's the twin bench. A little bit dejected after that one. Carl's 116th RBI. He brings his average to 321. There was a fine play by Carew, but nobody was covering first. And Ned, you mentioned earlier that many plays in this game will be rehashed for a long time. And there's one. That pitcher will be talking about this for a long time because... He failed to cover first base. There's Harrelson up taking ball one. It's two to one Red Sox in the fifth inning. Kenny Harrelson has struck out twice this afternoon. Well Carew made the play. He looked to the base and nobody was there. Killebrew of course was uh, called uh, called off the bag going, uh, going after that ground ball and uh, Perry did not cover. Ball two doing nothing. Cal Ermer. Twin manager. Deep in thought right now. Red Sox have gone into the lead for the first time today. Strike. Two and one. Hey, Dare at second. Perry has given up uh, two infield hits in this inning along with a single to center by Adair a looper. The only really solid shot was the double by Reggie Smith. Strike two. Two and two to Harrelson. Adair at second base. Yastrzemski at first. Two out. And Nestor Shylock a little bit perturbed on that one. <laughs> I think he had a lot of people perturbed on it. He was uh, waving his hands, as you saw, and finally got it in foul ground. And Nestor seemed to be a little excited on that play. He started jumping around before giving his sign. <laughs> well, it goes as a foul ball, and it's two and two. Looked like a uh, college cheerleader about to give the three cheers and a locomotive. Oh, oh. 2-2 two, two to Harrelson. Two out. Two on. Red Sox 2. The Minnesota 1 in the fifth inning. Here it comes again. There we go. Feel like you're hitting the beach up here. All you got to do, Melvin, is just dig a little bit. The count is two balls, two strikes. Very high and in foul. Tovar under it. That's it. And that's all for the Red Sox in the fifth. But they'll take the field to the cheers of this big crowd.
the top of the sixth at Fenway Park. Boston leading two to one. Oliva's hitting 289. Ball one. Tony would like Jim Honachick to look at the ball again. He's done that a couple of times today. It's all right, says Honachick. 28 is left-hander Sparky Lyle. 39 is right-hander Gary Bell. Lyle able to pitch again after having a pulled muscle in his arm, which kept him out four or five days. Two and nothing. Dick Williams was asked yesterday whether Ken Brett, the young left-hander who looked so good here against Cleveland the other day, would be used in this series. And Williams said he'd prefer to go with the experience from the left side, meaning, of course, Lyle, who's done a fine job for half a year. Foul and Adair going for it. Oliva is out. The last two times up, they have jammed Oliva. And uh, they got him on strikes in the third, Santiago did, and he this time fouling out to Adair. Bob Allison up, singled and struck out, hitting 259. Ball one. Red Sox went ahead with two in the fifth. Double by Smith, an infield hit by Jones, took a bad hop. Single by Adair, looped into center for one run. And Yastrzemski's infield hit, taken nicely by Carew, but Perry wasn't covering first for the other. Two and nothing. That's the first pitch that Allison has gotten inside, and it was bad enough to be ball three. He didn't want to make it too good on the inner half of the plate. There's a strike. Three and one. Detroit leading the Angels still 5 nothing in the fifth inning in their first game. Allison's on with the second walk given up by Santiago this afternoon. The other one was to Killebrew in the first inning. So the Twins have the tying run on with one out. Rod Carew at the plate. He has lined to third and grounded to first. Hitting 295. And also a very uh, prime contender for Rookie of the Year honors in the American League. Ball one. Foul. See a big puddle down that right field line that uh, they weren't able to get all the water off. And on a couple of shots to right field early in the ball game, there's that puddle along the line, which is mostly in foul ground, but some in fair. And the grass in right is very heavy. A couple of those hits splashed in there in the early innings. Good pitch. One and two. The California Angels did not score in the top of the sixth inning. 
They still trail Detroit 5 nothing. Count two and two to Rod Carew. Robert Service. Red Sox dugout. There's the Vice President Humphrey to this side. He's having a time. He's rooting for the Twins, of course. There's Ted Kennedy next to him, Senator Edward Kennedy. Got him. Strike three to Rod Carew. Two away. Carew wasn't exactly entranced by that call by plate umpire Hanachik. Looked at him, said a few things. Six strikeouts now for Santiago, facing Ulander with a runner at first. Ball one. Ted Ulander has grounded out and tripled, hitting 257 now. Base hit past Petroselli. Ulander has his second hit. So runners are now at first and second. Zimmerman is due up. But I believe Rich Reese, left handed hitting first baseman, is going to bat for him. Reese is a 232 hitter. There he is now. Very uh, flashy fielding first baseman. He has four homers and 19 runs batted in this year. And a couple of his home runs have won ball games for the Twins in the ninth inning. Reese will bat for Zimmerman as Cal Irmer goes to the bench for the first time. Here is Dick Williams coming out to talk to Santiago. So time is out all over the place. Bob Allison even has taken time to leave the field and go to the dugout. Williams talking with Howard and Santiago. John Wyatt had been out replacing Sparky Lyle for a while, but Lyle is back. We'll uh, pause here for station identification right now. This is Red Sox baseball. Back at Fenway Park, Rich Reese is batting for Zimmerman with runners at first and second for the Twins in the, six, in the sixth inning. Red Sox leading two to one. Dave Boswell and Ron Klein are in the bullpen for Minnesota. Ball one. No advance. Well, Sparky Lyle had been warming up in the bullpen, but apparently his elbow is bothering him. He's gone to the bench, and now left-hander Kemmel Brett is up throwing along with Gary Bell. And there are the bullpen relief crew, Boswell and Klein, you just saw. Well, maybe uh, Brett will get a shot. There he is, the young left-hander, number 36, Ken Brett, who uh, was really flogging them in the other afternoon against Cleveland in his major league debut. He was a very happy young fellow. The other day we saw him in that loose workout they held here, and he very happy about it, and, uh, very excited. On deck, Jim Perry. Here's the batter, Reese, facing Santiago. And that makes it one ball, one strike. Boston 2, Minnesota 1, sixth inning. World Series atmosphere, both teams hoping to get a little more of it. Strike two. Got him on a breaking pitch that time. It count is one ball, two strikes now.
Allison there at second base represents the tying run. And that makes it two and two. Reese, the pinch hitter. Allison at second. Ulander over at first base. Ball three. Full count now. Three and two. The runners will be moving with two out. Santiago in another well he's in uh, has been in jams before he got two out with a runner at third in the fourth inning Ulander was over there with one away and then he got the next two men pitched out of trouble in the third and gave up only one run although the twins loaded the bases in the first here they go and it's in the hole to left this will tie the ball game up. And the throw goes into second as the pinch hitter Rich Reese slams one almost hitting the runner Allison moving to third. It was very close to Bob Allison. A big clutch hit by Rich Reese singling home the tying run. It's brand new again 2-2. Two -two. Frank Castro or Andy Costco rather will bat. Or is it Castro? They've got both. It is Frank Castro who plays infield and outfield. Used to be with the Tiger organization. And he is going to bat now for pitcher Jim Perry. Another man off the bench for the Twins. Castro. He's hitting 333. No homers. Two runs batted in. He was recalled from the minors. This is just the 31st game he's played in for Minnesota this year. Castro getting information and instruction from Cal Irmer. Castro batting for Perry with runners at first and second. Two outs, score tied 2-2. Well, sir. didn't expect a tea party did you nope not at all all right we're going at it and Castro's in there against Santiago ball one each team has two runs and seven hits neither team has made an error And it's two and nothing. Two balls, no strikes to the second pinch hitter, Castro. Fastball high, ball three. Didn't miss by too much, and Santiago thought he had the strike. Three and nothing now. Strike. Three and one. And that loads them up. Castro walks. Reese goes to second. Ulander to third. Two outs, bases loaded. And the top of the order, Zoilo Versailles at the plate. He has singled, grounded out, and struck out. 
batting 201 right now. That was the third walk given up by Santiago. He's walked to this inning. Strike. And once again, the runner at third base, Ulander, was down the line, bluffing toward the plate on the windup by Santiago. Pops up the curve. Adair has it. Much more effective after he lost about 12 pounds. The first man he'll face will be George Scott, who lost about seven pounds and became a more effective hitter. Two to two ball game, bottom of the sixth inning. Scott is one for two, a single. Long drive, deep to center, it's gone. That's the way Scott hit him last year. A line drive into the crowd in the triangle in center field, and the Red Sox lead three to two. Ball one to Petroselli. Well, he jumped on Ryan Klein before Klein had a chance to get set, and he hit that pitch deep into that triangle. Well hit by George Scott. There wasn't any doubt about it. <laughs> Sir. Rico fouls one back. It's one ball, one strike. For Scott, his 19th home run and his 81st run batted in. There's left-hander Jim Merritt, right-hander Al Worthington, Worthington number 15. In the Twins' bullpen is 3-2 Boston. Boy, that exploded this crowd. That homer by Scotty. Petroselli's 0 for 2. He, the count on him is one ball, two strikes. Rico right now is hitting 259. The veteran Ron Klein, greeted harshly by Scott, has won seven and has lost none this year. Seven and 0 record, 3.60 earned run average. Fly ball to shallow right. Who's got it? Oliva wants it. Tony takes it. One out. Reggie Smith is up. He has struck out and doubled, scored a run. Smitty hitting 252. This is Klein's fifth appearance against Boston this year. No record against them. That side saddle motion. Ball one. And a lot of the players in the American League, of course, uh, Accuse him of loading up. Of throwing the wet one every now and then. But he has a lot of actions which. Could give you a, a thoughts along those lines. Goes to the mouth and rubs it off. And does a lot of other things. Two and nothing. On deck Jose Tartable. Who was placed the number eight spot when he came on to play right field. Well hit by Reggie deep to center. Ulander back though. And Ted puts it away for out number two. Boy that was stung. Ulander on Scott's home run just gave up. He didn't even go back on it. He knew but that time he knew he had a shot at it. Well, Reggie hit that ball very well but he had to reach a little bit for it and uh, if he would have been able to lay back and hit that ball solid like that it could have been gone also up into the center field seat. But when he had to reach for it that took away a little of his power although he got it on a good part of the bat. 
Here's Jose Tartable with two out, hitting 226, taking a strike. No home runs, 10 RBIs. Ron Klein, the third twin pitcher. Jim Perry went two and two thirds innings, gave up four hits and two runs. Hey, the big changeup got in that time. 0 and 2 to Tartable. And strike three, Tartable called out on strikes on the knuckleball, which really had uh, the bull fooled that time. So Klein gets them after giving up the home run to Scotty, but that was it in the sixth inning. One run, one hit. And the score at the end of six is Boston three, Minnesota two. Here we go into the seventh and Cesar Tovar is up. Strike one. Tovar 0 for 3. We'd like to welcome Narragansett Lager Beer, the good beer for the good hours now, to our telecast from Fenway Park. One ball, one strike. Tovar batting 267. He's flied to center, popped to Scott, and grounded out to Adair at third. Reggie Smith going back. He's got it. His average at 265. Boston three, Minnesota two in the seventh. Strike two. One ball and two strikes. Foul back out of play. George Scott has asked for timeout and has gone over into the Red Sox dugout. And he's going to get some sunglasses from the Red Sox bat boy down there, Keith, Ro Keith uh, Rosenfeld. That's the reason for the momentary delay. There he is, and he's got him. One and two on Twiggy. Or, no, <laughs> Killebro. <laughs> I'm still thinking about Scott after that home run, Mel. Still one and two. Another foul. In the Red Sox bullpen, John Wyatt has started to warm up. Two and two.
Santiago pouring the hard stuff to Killebrew for out number two in the seventh. Red Sox three and the Twins two, and here comes Oliva. Oliva has singled the center, driving in the first Minnesota run, struck out in the third, and fouled out to Adair in the sixth inning. His average at 288. Andrews over to Scott for the out. One, two. He has come up with a courageous, tough performance in the clutch. At the plate, he's 0 for 2. Struck out in the third, was called out on strikes in the fifth. Ron Klein is the third Twins pitcher, preceded by Jim Codd and Jim Perry. Versailles over to Killebrew. Santiago is out. One away in the seventh. Mike Andrews will be next. That was an odd play, Mel, on that last ground ball by Oliva. A grounder almost... Uh, caused some trouble with the sunshine. That's right. The ball bounced high and you can see Andrews. He uh, lost the ball and was trying to shade his eyes quickly and then position himself for the ground ball. And luckily the ball did come out of the sun in time for him to make the play. The count ball one to Andrews. Klein is one of four active pitchers who's been used at least 200 times both in starting and relieving. Ball two. He's had 203 starting assignments and 380 odd games in relief. Check swing roller. Fine throw safe. Mike Andrews checking the swing has himself an infield hit. His second of the day with one out in the seventh. There is one on and the batter is Jerry Adair. Hit into a double play in the first. Grounded out to shortstop in the third. Singled in the fifth inning. And drove home a run. The first Red Sox run. There's a foul ball out of play. The reason you're hearing that intermittent roar from the crowd is down behind the screen. Somebody's got a balloon that's bouncing up and down. Yes, I, su uh, I suppose you've got to do anything to relieve the tension at this ballpark today. Well, they're having a lot of fun with it, Ken. They're knocking it around the box seat area under the screen. The count is one strike. Andrews on first and one out in the seventh. Foul ball on the bunt try down to Bobby Doerr. Two strikes to Jerry Adair. They're foul back. <laughs> Merritt and Worthington continue to warm up in the bullpen. 
One and two the count. <laughs> well, a boo, big boo was raised there for some fan in the box seat, Ken. He put an end to the balloon. He got up with his <laughs> cigarette and put it to the balloon, and of course that ended everything. <laughs> One ball and two strikes to count. Klein. Shake. Joy over Science. hit more home runs than any left-handed batter in the history of Boston baseball. And this one came in a clutch situation to give Boston a 6-2 to two edge here in the seventh. And Ken, he got his pitch on that one. He got the pitch up around the letters, and that's the one Carl wanted to hit out of this ballpark. They're still hollering for Yaz. Howard lines one to left. Allison is back, though, and he's got it. Bob Allison catches the fly ball by Elston Howard for the second out in the seventh. Wait till you hear the roar when Yastrzemski comes out of that dugout to go back to his position. Here is Scott who brought the crowd to its feet in the sixth inning with a home run into the center field seats which put Boston ahead three to two. Strike one. Scott's batting average is now a very solid 302. But Yastrzemski today now has driven home four runs, has three base hits. Versailles gets Scott at first base to retire the side. For Boston, three runs. Listen to the roar for Yastrzemski. There were two hits in the inning, one error. Nobody is left on, and now at the end of seven, it is Boston six and Minnesota two. The crowd still roaring here at Fenway Park as we get ready to go into the eighth. Boston leading by a score of six to two. Bob Allison facing Jose Santiago. Ball one. Allison has single to left, struck out, and in the sixth inning walked and scored a run. One ball, one strike. Two and one now to Allison. Rod Carew will be next, and Ulander is due up third. Ball three. Allison's average 259 at the moment. Ball four, Bob Allison gets a leadoff walk in the eighth inning. And Dick Williams is coming out. That is the third walk allowed by Jose Santiago. John Wyatt and Gary Bell are warming up out of the Boston bullpen. Howard, Santiago, and Williams. And he is going to make the change. 
It looks like it'll be Bell. Jose Santiago has pitched a whale of a ball game for the Red Sox here today. Listen to this roar. So Gary Bell will be coming in to do the pitching now for Boston. The fellow who has had a lot of experience in relief work. He was in the bullpen for four years with Cleveland until last year they turned him into a starter again. He's been a busy man this week. And the 30 year old right hander is coming on here in the eighth inning. The Red Sox lead six to two with Bob Allison on first base. Mel. And Gary's coming on for his 38th appearance of the year. It'll be his ninth in relief. But as Ken mentioned, he has a lot of relief experience. While with the Cleveland Indians, he was mainly a relief until last season. The batter is Carew, who has lined to third, grounded out to first baseman Scott, and grounded out, has been called out on strikes. Runner at first and nobody out. Carew batting 295. He's been right up there in the top 10 almost all year quite a story he was with uh, Wilson in the Carolina League a year ago turned out to be the all star second baseman this year strike one The right hander is Wyatt and the southpaw is Brett. High fly ball to right field, tartable into a tough sun. He's got it. Rod Carew flies to right as one out and one on in the eighth. Boston has a six to two edge. The Red Sox did not score over the first four innings of this game. The Twins scored in the first. Boston got two in the fifth. One in the sixth and three in the seventh. And of course, Carl Yastrzemski with his 44th homer. Hold on here now. Dick Williams wants to talk to Andrews, and I have an idea what it's about, Mel. Yes, uh, Tottable seemed to have trouble picking up that ball when his first hit. He lost in the sun. I'm sure that Dick Williams went out to tell second baseman Mike Andrews to go back on the ball, hit the right field, and try to help him. As much as possible because this is a tough sun feel at this moment, Ken. The I sun is down low. It is. Pitch is a ball. Here's Ulander, who has grounded out to second, tripled, and singled. Ball two. Mentioning Yastrzemski's 44th home run that puts him one ahead of Killebrew in his quest for the Triple Crown. His average is now 322. Andrews makes the play at second. Ulander grounding out to the second baseman and Mike made a fine play I'll tell you that sunshine is really difficult even on those grounders out there at second as uh, strange as it may seem but you can tell it from right up here yes and noticing Mike Andrews looking into to the catcher's signs Kenny is shading his eyes with his glove and his arm trying to get a look at what the pitch may be so that he'll know whether to move to the hole to his right or to his left here's Russ Nixon the catcher now Batting 238. Foul ball is out of play. Two men out in the eighth inning. Boston ahead six to two. Ted Ulander is on first base. 
And Russ Nixon is facing an old roommate, Gary Bell. They were roomies together when both of them were with the Cleveland Ball Club. Al Worthington is warming up in the Twins' bullpen. One and one. Two balls, one strike to count to Nixon. Line drive toward Yaz. He's got it. And they're down to the eighth. No runs. No hits. And one man is left on. And they came up with two runs. The Twins tied it up in the sixth. And in the last of the sixth, Scott hit a home run. Pitch to Petroselli is ball one. Leading off in the sixth to put Boston ahead three to two. And Yastrzemski slammed a three run homer in the seventh, and it is six to two now in the eighth. Rico is 0 for three. Ball two. Petroselli's average at 259. Two and one. Left hander Jim Merritt on the mound for Minnesota. He is the fourth pitcher of the day. Jim caught, hurt his elbow early after going two and a third innings. Foul ball out of play. Jim Perry worked two and two thirds, and Klein worked one and a third. Three and two on Petroselli. Reggie Smith on deck. Foul back here. Rico gets a walk. The leadoff man in the eighth inning, Petroselli, draws a walk, and the batter will be Reggie Smith. Reggie has struck out, doubled to center field, into the gap, actually, in left center, and last time lined very hard to center field, batting 251. Petroselli is back safely. It's quite a move that Merritt has to first base. Joy over Sias over to second. Safe at first. Smith reaches. Petroselli forced at second. Versailles over to Carew. And the batter will be Jose Tartabo.
Out of bowl, batting 225. Smith back safely. to right field Oliva back he has room and he makes the catch Smith tags up and goes for second and he is safe heads up running by Reggie Smith on Tarnable's long drive he moves over to second well, little Jose has been whacking that ball with authority in the last uh, few weeks Mel Yes, he has, Ken. In the last three weeks, he's been hitting the ball hard. However, he can't get that home run that he's been driving for. <laughs> he keeps coming close, but he's just a little shot all the time. Wouldn't tomorrow be a great time? Oh, a wonderful time. <laughs> Maybe with a 2-2 score to hit one and break it up. That's what he would like to do. I know he mentioned that on the last trip uh, going into Baltimore. He said that's when he'd like to hit his first home run. Gary Bell fouls one back, strike one. In the Twins' ninth inning, the pitcher would be due first, and then to the top of the order for Visayas and Tobar. Two strikes on Bell. Second baseman Rod Carew makes the play. In the bottom half of the eighth inning, the Red Sox had no runs, they had no hits, no errors, and one man left. At the eighth full inning, it's the Red Sox six, the Twins two. Rich Rollins is going to lead off. He'll be batting for merit. His average is 246. He has six homers and has driven in 39 runs. Rollins leading off in the ninth inning. Right now, the brief pause is so that the lights can be turned on here at Fenway Park. Detroit won the first game with California, five to nothing. They are playing a doubleheader today at Tiger Stadium, and they will play another doubleheader tomorrow. Rollins facing Bell. Foul ball to Adair. Wyatt and Brett are warming up again for Boston. The count is one strike. This is the ninth inning. The Red Sox are leading six to two.
Rollins fouls it out of play. Two strikes. One and two the count. Two and two. It's a full count to Rollins. Three and two to Rich Rollins leading off in the ninth inning for the Minnesota Twins. Boston with six runs, ten hits, and no errors. Minnesota, two, seven, and one. Gary Adair. One out in the ninth. Next, Zoilo Versailles. Versailles has single that came in the first inning when he scored the first twins run. He has grounded out to short, struck out, and popped to third. The second twins run came in the sixth inning. On a pair of base hits. Foul ball, strike one. Visayas was driven home by Oliva. Rich Reese had the pinch single to left that drove home Allison with the second run. And for Boston, Carl Yastrzemski has driven in four runs with a homer, and Scott has a solo blast. Foul to the screen. Strike two. One ball, two strikes now. Tomorrow afternoon in the final game, it will be Lonborg and Chance. Chance has won 20 and lost 13. Two and two. And Lonborg has won 21 and lost nine. Smith is calling. Two out in the ninth. The batter, Tovar. He has fly to center. Popped to Scott. Grounded to Adair at third and flied deep to Smith in center field. As Reggie made a fine running catch on him in the seventh.
I'm sure you're aware of all the contingencies of the pennant race at this time. Fly ball to left field. Yastrzemski running hard. Can't get there in time. Tovar is digging for a double. And he is in at second base. With two out of the ninth inning. Boston ahead six to two. Tovar loops a double down into the left field corner. The batter is Killebrew. He has walked, doubled, been called out on strikes, struck out swinging. Batting 265. Ball one. Wyatt and Brett are in the Red Sox bullpen, but they're doing more watching than throwing right now. Ball two. Dick Williams is coming out of the Red Sox dugout. There's the twins dugout. Killebrew is walking back over to it Oliva by the on deck circle. Two balls and no strikes to count. Foul back out of play. Two and one. Two balls, one strike. Two and two. They give Killebrew the whole right field corner as Smith is well over into left center and Tarnable is way over in right center field. Fly ball, it may be foul. Yastrzemski down in the corner, it's out of reach. Up in the crowd, two and two. And there's one of the many Red Sox signs that we've seen around, not only this ballpark, but others over the past couple of months. Another foul ball by Harmon Killebrew. Still two and two. Stroke to left field, and this one is going to be gone. Harmon Killebrew has hit a home run, and that ties him with Yastrzemski at 44 and makes the score 6 to 4 in favor of the Red Sox. 
Tovar's bloop single gave Killebrew a chance to come to the plate, and he banged out his 44th home run of the year to even him with Carl Yastrzemski. There are two men out. The Red Sox lead by a score of six to four, and the batter is Oliva. He had a single on the first pitch his first time up to drive home the first Minnesota run. Since then, he has struck out swinging, fouled a third, and grounded out the second. Line drive to Adair, and that's all. Adair robs him of a base hit with a great catch of a line drive down there at third base. And the Red Sox have beaten the Minnesota Twins by a score of six to four. And there you see the ball players heading into the Red Sox dugout as a crowd of 32,909 saw the Red Sox come from behind to come up with a very big victory here today. A victory that they had to have in order to stay alive in this pennant race. 